All right. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I want to greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, family, all of you who are tuned in in the greeting words of peace. You know, we say it in that ancient tongue of Arabic, Assalamu Alaikum. Those words simply mean peace be unto you. Dear family, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to another episode of the Image and Nation show. Sitting alongside me is my beloved sister and helper, our beloved sister. Sister Claudia Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, family. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. And you're in for a treat, I'm sure. This well, week, Romania. <laughs> well, I hope so. If, I, if I'm completely honest with you, um, to those of you who are viewing, I'm not feeling too happy because I've really been having some tremendous difficulties with this internet and with this technology. As you, you will know, those of you who attempted to tune in last week, we weren't even able to bring you hmm. our episode last week because things were so bad. And again, uh, you know, I just want to remind all of us, it's, it's a warning to myself and a warning to all of us in truth, that we should never, ever become complacent about this technology, this internet, because of course, it doesn't belong to us, dear family. Okay, and you know, if they ever should determine to cut it off and to stop us from being able to broadcast in the manner in which we desire, then of course, they can do that. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, they pulled one of our shows off of YouTube. So none of these platforms is ever a guarantee. And so, you know, let's utilize it to the best of our ability while we can, while we have the access. Let us not ever take it for granted. I thank you all, uh, dear family, for tuning in to yet another episode of the Image and Nation show. Don't forget, we want you to let us know where you are tuned in from, wherever you are on the planet. Let us know in the chat. Uh, where you are watching or able to listen from this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear family, this is the Imagination Show, where if you listen to those three syllables, image, ah, nation, the idea once again is to stimulate the imagination of the members of the human family that we may once again have the ability to envisage, to be able to see, envision, to be able to look for ourselves and create for ourselves in this powerful mind that we've been given by Almighty God. See whatever we want to see. And ultimately, if we can envision it, if we can see it, if we can bring it about into our imagination, we can bring it into a concrete reality. This is real dear brothers and sisters, it's not a lightweight thing, this thing called imagination or the ability to image an entire nation. Can you see outside of the box that our enemy desires us to be enclosed within? We've got to step out of that box, but it begins in the mind, dear family. We have to free our minds. We have to become a free people again, but it doesn't begin by breaking down some physical bars or some physical walls. It begins right here in the manner in which we think, in the manner in which we see this precious life that is God-given. Dear family, um, you know, I was very disappointed uh, last week that I wasn't able to bring you last week's episode. And so essentially, you know, that's what I'm hoping to do this week. And so it's welcome to episode 55, dear brothers and sisters of the Image and Nation show. And this episode is entitled Up, You Mighty People. This is not some uh, terminology that Leo Muhammad came up with. It is a very, very powerful um, set of words designed to raise a whole people from a terrible and abject condition. And so this is our title this evening. I am appealing to us to get up. I'm appealing to us 
to wake up. I'm appealing to us to recognize that we're living in a time period when the only way is up. We cannot continue to be a downtrodden or a downpressed people, regardless of what the enemy may look like, regardless of what the forces may be like, regardless of what it is that we feel we are up against. It's time now for us to rise. It's time for us to lift ourselves up because the alternative is too abysmal to contemplate. The alternative to really getting up and being what we were created to be is really, you know, not worth contemplating in terms of its horribleness, in terms of its potential for our complete and total demise. Dear family, I hope you are doing well. Please, you know, make a quick phone call, man. Call a family member, call a loved one. Tell them to tune in to the Image and Nation show. And don't forget, dear family, to like, share, and subscribe to our uh, site. You know, visit the Nation of Islam London Study Group website on YouTube. Right now, we are live on both Zoom and YouTube. And once again, I'm saying you are most welcome. If you like what you see, if you click on that like button, if you continue to share our videos, you know, these videos are not necessarily the cup of tea of everybody because unfortunately what they have determined now is that the attention span of the average human being is about maybe a, a minute and a half, <laughs> two minutes or three minutes, and that's it. And nobody can really sit through half an hour or an hour or an hour and a half or even two hours of a video. That's just too much. And so we, we know that we are literally asking a lot when we ask people now to really, you know, take in a whole program, a whole uh, uh, talk around any particular subject, regardless of how compelling or powerful that subject matter may be. We know that we are like a fish swimming upstream against the tide in what we are attempting to do. But that won't stop us from trying to do that, you know, because we are firm believers in the admonition, in the reality that nothing, dear family, is impossible. We believe in the David and Goliath syndrome. That's how we like to see life. We don't believe that we should give up ever, regardless of how difficult, how tough the task may be. And so we understand that there are a lot of people who, you know, won't necessarily like this type of message, but it doesn't stop us, dear family, from coming to you to the best of our ability each and every week, starting at uh, 6.30 and going through to approximately 8 o'clock, 8.30 maximum. And so we ask you to stay with us and bear with us and study with us that we may all of us be more enlightened uh, by the end of the pro by the end of the process the latest controversy surrounding Kanye West or ye and the so-called Jews dear family is nothing new and is a continuation of a long list of black men who have been falsely accused of anti-semitism against those who are in effect and in reality guilty of anti-black racism. I say again, those who accuse us of anti-Semitism are in fact those who are guilty of anti-black racism and the inordinate control and exploitation of our gifts and talents and our desire to rise from our fixed. It's a fix, dear family. It's not real. It's not nature. It's not natural. It's not innate. It's fixed inferior position and condition. We have been deliberately pushed and placed in this condition, and it's time for us to get out of it. I just wanted to remind us of 
the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan really highlighting this particular reality, not just in terms of when it just broke the other day, but this is something that's been going on for many, many years. And so let's listen to the man of God in our midst today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now the ADL has jumped on Kanye West because he said black people don't have the same level of connections as Jewish people. Black people don't have the same connection as oil people, quote. Did he lie? No, he told the truth. And the ADL, Mr. Foxman, issued a press release on the second day of December 2013. And this executive director said, quote, if the comments are true as reported, this is classic anti-Semitism, there it goes again, the age-old canard that Jews are all powerful. No, you're not all powerful, but you certainly are powerful, and you control the levers of government. You don't want to admit it, but as a celebrity, you're telling Kanye West he should know better. He does know better, and that's why he said what he said. Then you said to him, we hope that he would take responsibility for his words. Understand why they are so offensive and apologize to those he has offended. You know what, uh, Mr. Foxman? I wish you and I could have a dialogue. Hmm. You wouldn't put that small time stuff over on me that you put on scared to death Negroes that if they mention Jew and you call them anti-Semitic, they start bowing to you and your pressure? Kanye West, don't bow to the pressure to apologize to anybody. You said nothing wrong. Who are you, Farrakhan, to tell him that he said nothing wrong? I am directly from the Christ and the Messiah. So what I tell you has more weight than anything that these enemies might want to say. You have nothing to apologize for. It is their fear of the truth. And that's why it gives me pleasure to defend my brother. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I wonder if we're really listening, though, you see? And I wonder if we really understand that there is a God component in all of this and that God is real and that God has a man on the planet today who is representative of him and that we have nothing to fear in telling the truth, that we have nothing to fear in terms of now trying to stand up for our God-given right and our God-given truth, man. I mean, in this latest episode, the amount of black so-called celebrities, black stars who have come out to condemn ye. I mean, it's crazy, dear family, to see this level of cowardice, scared to death, Negroism, that's going on with black people who are supposed to be multimillionaires even. But then you see, they're showing you and, and they're proving what Kanye or Ye has stated in relation to this lopsided relationship of these managers and these executives and these people who have so much control over these artists. Because who else has that kind of power that they can, according to what the brother said, he just lost $2 billion like that. All of these people deplatforming our brother and all of these people now literally trying to curtail his ability to do business. I mean, this is serious stuff, man. And this has been going on for years. And this has happened not just even to black people. Many white people have been crushed who dare to criticize these 
what I call so-called Jews. I just want us to understand, dear family, that this is not a time for laying down and backing down and being scared to death, man. This is a time when either we believe or we disbelieve. I wonder if all of the black people around the world, and especially those of us with opinions and views about everything under the sun, because there's, there's a lot of us like that, man. We know everything. we got so many knowles on our planet. But I wonder if we understand or realize that we're not going to make it. <laughs> I, I want to emphasize that. We are not going to make it if we are not thoroughly and totally rooted in the belief in our higher self, which is almighty God. Our higher self is God. I'm not asking you to believe in no spook God floating on a cloud. I'm talking about your higher self, the one that we all know about and the one that many of us are in denial about until we get into some real trouble, then all of a sudden we want to start calling on God. And you know what I'm talking about. Almighty God, by whatever name we wish to call him. Let me just make it very, very plain, uh, dear family. If we think we're going to be able to bluff our way past, over, around, under, or beyond the enemy without the power of our God self. You see, because I'm really emphasizing this because, you see, there's a moral component that's going to be involved in all of this. There's a righteous component that's going to be involved in all of this. Because I know some of us think that we can be just as evil as the enemy and somehow only when we get into trouble, we can invoke God. No, dear family. We, we have to have that moral rectitude, that moral correctness with us at all times. So we're not going to be able to go over, around, under, or beyond this enemy without the power of our God self and the universal, the universal power of God combined then this show and everything else, I'm talking about this show, the Imagination Show, everything else that we're doing is a complete waste of time and effort because this enemy is determined and relentless and will not stop. Do you remember that film, that movie, The Terminator? He will not stop until either we or he is dead. I, I just want you to understand the kind of, uh, wrestling match that we're involved in here. Yeah, it's to the death or to life. That's how the drama of, the, of his rule, the enemy's rule ends and the new world or the kingdom of God begins. I, I, I'm, I'm really not in a mood uh, for playing around this evening. And I say to you, Take it or leave it. Go ahead, uh, Sister Claudia. Yeah, can I just say that um, our Minister Louis Farrakhan, he addressed us this morning. We can catch that address on media.ny.org, the address of Yay Kyrie, Kyrie Irving controversy. And it's a serious address. I suggest everyone log on to media.ny.org. Okay, I hope you all got that, dear family. That was just this morning when the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan addressed this issue of the two brothers who are in this massive controversy at the present time with these so-called Jews. Dear family, the following quote has been attributed to the Honourable Marcus Messiah Garvey from the 1920s where he said, up you mighty race, accomplish what you will. Our title today is up you mighty people, you can accomplish what you will. But he said in the 20s, up you mighty race. Believe it or not, dear family, we could be excused for thinking in the 20s that we are a race of people, but we're not a race, man. We are indeed a people, but we're bigger than race. 
the black man and the black woman, there is no beginning or ending to us. A race is something with a start and a finish. We were here from the beginning and we will be here in the ending of this universal order. There is no beginning nor ending for us, dear family. So we are not a race. We produced all of the races. We produced the brown man. We produced the yellow man. We produced the white man. They are all our children. We are the mothers and fathers of civilization. This is real. And the wise among the enemy knows our true identity. And they are determined that you and I must never, ever come into that knowledge. And that's why whenever any individual among us, and in particular, any individual who has got influence, who has got millions of followers or has money, anytime anybody like that raises their head to try to give us information about the reality of who we are. When you hear Kanye or Ye saying that I'm God, hmm. man, you don't understand just how scary that is right. for a demon who want black people to think that we are dogs hmm. and who are happy to promote music that says over and over again, nigger and dog hmm. as the way to identify or calling our females female dogs, using that filthy B word as a description. Come on, dear family, it's time for us to wake up from our slumber and recognize that we have to get up as a people now, man. While from the 1930s onwards, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, up, you mighty nation, you can accomplish what you will. And he, and he continued, he said, build your future on these foundations, freedom, justice, and equality. Let me repeat what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said from the 30s onwards. Up, you mighty nation, you can accomplish what you will. Build your future on these foundations, freedom, justice, and equality. And let me just say this, dear brothers and sisters. I hope I'm going to get through everything this evening. But let me just say this, you know, even when we use terms like freedom, justice, and equality, oftentimes I think we think that we're talking again to the white man. We want the white man to free us. We want freedom from the white man. But it's not necessarily so. When we say freedom, dear family, did you know that it's talking about, again, I said it earlier on, free in our own selves, man. Free in our own minds. Becoming free thinkers again. Being able to, once again, use our own God-given imagination, man, to be able to see for ourselves independently from anybody else's viewpoint. That's what freedom is. Real freedom is freeing yourself. Real freedom is recognizing freedom for others. If we want to be free, why would we become jailers of anybody. I'm talking about in interpersonal relationships even, where as men, maybe we want to have our women locked up in some way or form, but then we want to be free to be able to do whatever we want to do. Well, that's unjust. And so it's freedom, justice, and equality. Where's this justice coming from? Why is it that we continuously talk about the injustice of these white demonic people with uniforms who shoot us down for no good reason, put their knees on our necks and kill us for no good reason, handcuff and abuse us on various places all over the planet 
falsely accuse us and convict us of crimes that we haven't committed, while at the same time, we won't be just to our own selves. And we won't be just to one another. We won't do justice by one another, yet we're demanding justice from an external force. Well, it don't work like that, man. Only when we give justice and we're prepared to be just to self, just to one another. See, the external unjust force will be afraid to come into a place where they see justice abounding, man. But if when they look at us, all they see is us perpetrating injustice against one another, well, that's a green light for them to do it to us too. Do you see how it works? Dear family, an equality. We have to stop this. You know, I mean, you know, I've been blessed a few times, a couple of times in my life to get on board an airplane and when going through the, the door of the airplane, turn left, man into business class or whatever. But, you know, some of us, I see us, we get so <clears throat> excited over elevation within a world like this where if we got a bit more money, a bit more prestige, a bit more recognition in Satan's world, a nice house or a nice car or nice clothing or whatever, or, or and, and designer labels that we can wear, we start thinking that we're better than the brother or the sister who don't have those things. That's a tremendous mistake, dear family. It's sick. But that's this world, that, that's how the world sets it up, isn't it? No, Why but that's the point. everyone have a comfy seat when they're flying? Exactly. That's the it's point. The mindset they make us have. Yeah, everybody should be able to sit comfortably. Like You're going to be flying for, for two, three, four, yeah. five, six hours, 18 hours Ooh. to Australia, or whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. Why shouldn't you have a comfortable seat? Right. But they've built their world on a class That's right. based system mm -hmm. where now you've got first class, mm -hmm. <laughs> second That's class. Right. Why? <laughs> no, low class, business class. That's right. And we get all caught up in it and go along with it and think that this somehow makes us better. Mm -hmm. so, so you look down. I remember one time I was in business class on a flight to America. And on the way in, I saw a, a friend of mine. I saw a brother who was in, um, what do you call that, economy. Mm -hmm. He went to the economy. And as God is my witness... I spent at least two hours, three hours of that flight down in economy talking to my friend. Hmm. See, because it's not about class as far as I'm concerned, man. I'm going to sit up there now in all this comfort. Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, somehow I'm thinking I'm better. No, man, that's my brother. And so I went and cotched myself on the side of his seat. It's very uncomfortable, I remember. But I was happy to be down there with my brother having a good conversation. And I'm just saying to us, dear family, freedom, justice, and equality must never be some slogan. Mm -hmm. it, it must be something real that we actually put into practice as a people. And this up, you mighty nation, we are a nation, brothers and sisters. And I'm not talking about the nation of Islam per se, just like what you perceive some little a uh, religious group off somewhere in a corner. No, the, 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 the nation is the totality of the members of the black human family wherever we are found on planet Earth. That's our nation. A nation, by the way, without borders. So that wherever you see a black man and a black woman, you know, that's family, man. This is the, oh man, we need this mentality quick time mm -hmm. in a hurry because with that mentality, it's, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's over. Our enemy don't stand a chance when we have that type of unified mindset, that type of unified thinking, dear brothers and sisters. Historically, black men who have attempted to get out from under the yoke of the white supremacist system have come under the fire 
have come under fire for even having the audacity to change our name. Did you know that? Just to change our name and to develop concepts and ideas of our own. Did you know that black men are not allowed to do these things? You think that it's allowed, but only when you do it, you realize there are consequences that come your way. Because independent thoughts, words, and deeds from a black man are seen as a direct threat to this world and its power over us. Here's a little reminder, dear family. Why don't you like to be called Clay anymore? No, Clay was not my name. Once we follow the believe, hear the understand the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad and come into knowledge of ourselves, then we want to be called after names of our people, which are names that fit us black people. And Clay was a white man's name, it was a slave name. And I'm no longer Clay, I'm no longer a slave, so now I'm Muhammad Ali. Do you answer to Clay anymore? Well, some people, well, they still say Clay. Cash Sports is... writers still call you Clay. No, I, I stop them because they know better. But some people who don't know better, uh, they say, how you doing, Mr. Clay? I may not say nothing because their intention was nice. They didn't mean no harm. Then some walk up. How you doing, boy? How you feeling, Cassius? Uh, meet Mr. Clay, fine boy. Then I have to straighten him out because he's agitating and acting smart and bossy. But it's according to how they approach me. See, dear family, you have to be strong, man, because they will refuse to call you by your name, by your God-given name. And they will want to continue to keep their name on you. Just to remind everybody, um, because I know there's been a couple of inquiries in the chat as to where we were last week. Again, once again, we do apologize, dear family, that uh, we had a lot of uh, technical issues with the internet last week. And so we were unable to bring you uh, last week's episode of the Image and Nation show. And so just for those of you who are wondering what happened, that's what happened. And as I said at the beginning, please, family, do not take it for granted that we are necessarily always going to be able to be here because the internet does not belong to us. And there are those who are terrified of us ever really using this thing in the manner in which it should be used for upliftment as opposed to some of the foolishness that goes on online. Dear uh, brothers and sisters, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15, it says, And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. You know who that scripture is talking to? It's talking to the enemy. It says, And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Whether you know it or not, whether you appreciate it or not, whether you believe it or not, the black man and woman alive on planet earth today, we are the chosen of God. We are his children. Ye are all God's children of the most high God. Kanye West or Ye is not mad. He's not crazy. He's not making stuff up when he says, I'm God. <laughs> Understand this. Ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee, talking to the enemy, and call his servants by another name. There's a reason why in the nation of Islam you see us go through this name change process. Starts off as Kunta Kenti. Kunta Kenti tells you something about the man's historical ancient origin, man and the land mass from which his family sprung. But then when he's captured and destroyed as a human reality through that slave making process, he becomes Toby, <laughs> named after a jug. And from Malcolm Little, this is now they called us little. They give us their surname. We have to come from that process now back to ourselves. And because we don't 
no longer know the name Kenti. We no longer know the original name by which our family was called. We adopt or we take on the X, which means unknown quantity, unknown entity. It's not a small thing. It's a, it's a mighty thing. It means that once we come back into the knowledge of self now, we become an unknown power, an unknown force. That's what the X means. It also means ex-drug dealer, ex-pimp, ex-slave, ex-nigger, and all of those negatives that they made us into because God made a man, according to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and we agree 100%. God made a man. The white man made niggers. Understand this. And so from Malcolm Little, we become Malcolm X and ultimately Malcolm Shabazz. Shabazz coming again from our ancient line because we have to return to our origin, our origin, back to our God. Dear family, this is really, really important. A name is very, very powerful. Mm. <laughs> it is. Isn't it powerful, Sister Claudia? Yeah, well, that's why when you see, say like a white person is expecting John Smith to be white, then he comes in the office. Oh, you're black. <laughs> it just doesn't go those doesn't days. Doesn't go, man. Doesn't go with us. Doesn't go. When you go to the airport, isn't it? They see your, your name and they look at you. Look at the picture. But that's not your name. That's right. They know. Yeah, they know. And and imagine, just I just want you to picture a, a Chinese man or that's a Japanese right. man, but when you look at his passport, it says Tony Smith. That's just right. just think yes, about it. Yes, exactly. You know? Think about that because that's how foolish we look as a people. And some of us are so excited about wearing these crazy names. Mind you, when I was in the world, I, I felt well proud of my name. No, but but that's now I think, what an idiot. That's what? the point, yes. isn't it? That's yes. the point. See, and that's what I was saying to you. Come out of her. That's right. My that's people. Right. The sister Claudia said when she was in the world, that's mm. the point. You know, or in other words, when I was ignorant, mm, when I was right. foolish, that's right. we all were like that. And we're not here throwing off on you mm. like, oh, you know, we, we always knew right. these things. No, right. we, we're coming from the same place. But we have to be uh, humble enough, have enough humility to mm. say, you know what? I've been a fool, man. That's, that's, right. what, that's what the prodigal son story mm. is all about in the scriptures. Those of you who like to reject the scriptures, you don't understand that the scriptures are there as prototypes, as blueprints mm. of all of our lives to show us pointers of how we've got to change. That's right. Because at a certain point in time, after the uh, prodigal son had fallen down and was feeding swine and doing all kinds of madness, trying to join himself onto a people who were not his people, mm -hmm. at a certain point in time, he said, you know what? I think I need to return to my father's That's right. house. That's right. And when he determined to return to his father's house, he said, I don't want to go arrogant. Hmm. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't have to be a big shot in the house. Hmm. Just let me come back as a servant, man. That's good enough for me. Because a servant in your own father's house is 1,000 times more elevated and better than being some big shot in Satan's house. Hmm. Mm -hmm where as a big shot in Satan's house, you may have a billion dollars, hmm. but with a snap of his finger, Satan can take it away in an instant. I just want us to think today, and I hope we are thinking, uh, dear uh, family, and I want us to take this in next. Hope everybody is good. Mr. O'Connor. What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Have you been to court to establish the I don't. I, you know, I didn't have to go to court to be called Murphy or Jones or Smith. Excuse me for answering you this way. That's if all a right. Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is an Irish name. Uh, a European name or the name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. And a yellow person, Chinese is a yellow man, 
and uh, he has nothing to do or no connection whatsoever with the name Murphy. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. So that when you see a Negro today who's named Johnson, if you go back in his history, you'll find that he was once his grandfather or one of his forefathers was owned by a white man who was named Johnson. His name is Bunch. His, his grandfather was owned by a I white man point. that was uh, named Bunch. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during was there slavery. Any, was there any line, uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to... you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dear family, do we understand how important it is to renounce, <laughs> to reject that which was imposed upon us. That's the thing that you got to understand about this. It's not something, it's not lightweight, brothers and sisters. It really isn't. It meant a great deal to the enemy to rename us. It's like somebody, you know, it's like somebody going and stealing a, a, a bicycle and then taking that bicycle and disguising that bicycle, giving it a different color, giving it, removing identification marks and putting other things on it so that if the owner should ever see that bicycle again, mm -hmm. he wouldn't recognize it. Do you know that the enemy is trying to hide you and I from God mm -hmm. by giving us his name? Do you know how important it is that we have to be recognizable to God in that when he sees us and he hears us. This is why I was talking earlier on about this, this righteous conduct that we have to have. Because when God looks at us, he only wants to see himself reflected back. He don't want to see Satan reflected back. I wonder if we get it, man. Yeah, but when you think about it, imagine a baby. You go to another country, you see a child, and you tell that child, your name is Sally Jones, yeah. you say, and your family's name is. That's what's happened to us. That's what's <laughs> happened to us. And, and bear in mind, uh, family, it hasn't happened to anybody else on the planet. <laughs> right. This is what you've got to understand. For those who say, well, you know, the, the Asian people, mm -hmm. you know, they were colonized and they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. And the Chinese, they suffered the, 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 the opium wars and they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. But guess what? The Asians never lost their name, mm -hmm. language, culture, culture, God. The Chinese never lost their name, mm -hmm. culture, God. See, there's a big difference mm -hmm. between what happened to everybody else. That's right. We were the only people on the planet who were thoroughly robbed and spoiled. Before we go further, just a brief African David and Goliath story to encourage us in our rise against the machine of white domination and the continued neo-colonialism and oppression of our people on the African continent, dear family. Just check out this little story of David and Goliath in the modern era. Today's report is about a Burkinabe young boy um, that is almost like a hero right now. <laughs> he shot down with a slingshot a drone that was flying, according to them, um, spying on them. So that drone is suspected to belong to the French military. So he single-handedly brought down that drone that probably cost thousands and thousands of dollars. But, you know, um, he had to do what he had to do. As you know, the... But just think about it, dear family. Here you got African people in an African country and the young boy has to knock out of the sky 
a drone being flown by the French military. Imagine that's how much control they have over us as a people that the French military can be flying a drone in over an African population. Can you imagine an African or Africans flying an African government drone over France hmm. in some locality in France? I mean, I just want you to juxtapose these concepts and ideas so that you can understand what we're saying here, man. The arrogance of this, mm -hmm. where you got children playing in Africa, but yet above them they can see a French military drone. And it's not necessarily that that country is at war with France. France would probably claim to be some kind of ally to that country, yet they're spying on the local children with their drone to the point where the young brother decides, I'm going to knock this down. Bukhnabe youth are saying no, no to French military presence in their um, country. And they've been saying that, they've been protesting to the point where, you know, the French military tried to disperse that protest and ended up injuring and killing uh, those young men. So uh, the, clearly, clearly <laughs> now they are not feeling the French presence and the reason why the youth in the first place were um, protesting the French military being there in their country is because of the insecurity that is in that country. The French troops came like to rescue them in a way, right? They, they intervened, they brought their troops so that they helped their country with the instability and insecurity. But the youth are saying nothing changed, everything is worse. So the French troops clearly are not helping us. If they're not helping us, why are they here? So leave our country. That's what they're saying. And it's reported that most of the young people that are living there do not like French troops and this has been growing um, over the past months because they have been seeing things, they're seeing no progress but all they're seeing is the military presence and um, they are understanding that them being here is not helping us if anything it's making it worse so we need them to leave and that's that's what we're talking about. The youth is waking up and we are saying no more. No more of this nonsense. No more of you lying to us, telling us that you're sending your troops to help us and you're actually hurting us. You're actually doing the opposite of what you're saying you're doing. So they're saying no more. That's the reason why this young boy used his slingshot to destroy that drone that was sent uh, to them to spy on them. And he was like, nope. It's not happening today, so that's why people are celebrating him. He's like a little hero right now, and he deserves it. He, he did well. He really did well. He's very smart. That young boy is going to grow up to be someone that we need to look for. You know, he's really inspiring at this very young age to be able to do that. That tells us that he has talent and we just need to get it out of him anyways guys let us know down below what your thoughts are about this young boy um using his just his slingshot to take down the drone it kind of it reminds me of david and goliath in the bible i hope we get it dear family the bible is not a history book the bible is a book of prophecy it's really teaching us if we understand how to study it if we understand how to study the scripture, just teaching us about what we in this day and in this time need to do, can do, will do, must do. And no matter how big the enemy looks and no matter how small the victory, each one, each one of those small victories lends itself toward our total liberation, our total freedom and we have to begin to fight back we have to begin as a people to do something for ourselves image and nation promoting and advertising goods and services for the benefit of our community dear family please take note of the following and support to the best of your ability jj's sorrel products check out at sorrel 2020 that's at Sorrel 2020, visit Instagram and order your Sorrel products from JJ Sorrel Products. Absolutely beautiful products, 
uh, dear brothers and sisters, for your delight. This is how we. I didn't mean to play that. Anyway, here we go. Continuing with our advertisements this evening. Visit www.p2bb.uk or London Study Group 19.org and order your proud to be black t shirts, caps, and mugs and say it like you mean it P2BB, in other words, proud to be black. Dear family, a lot of people are scared now to, you know, declare the beauty of blackness, but we have to put black back on the map. If we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. And in reality, what you've got to understand is that black is constantly under attack. And so, you know, we make no apology for saying black is beautiful, black is power, and proud to be black. Dear family, make sure that you visit www.natureshairproducts.co.uk and try the moisturizing hair and scalp oil, as well as beard oil and other natural hair products. Get some of these products and get your hair once again shiny and full of health and vitality and allow your hair to grow in a more natural way. The tribe, visit the tribe, dear family, www.tribenation2019.com and pick up an item of clothing that you can wear that shows that you are a wide awake black man and black woman and child. Also, W-Y-L-A, that stands for the West London Young Leaders Academy for boys and girls age eight to 16, producing our future leaders. Dear family, we've got to focus on our young people, man. If it's not about the youth, then it's about vanity. We, those of us who are up in age, those of us who have lived on the planet for a little while, we have to focus on developing the future leaders. We have to be grooming and developing our children that they will stand on our shoulders and take the fight to the enemy and take our liberation to the next level and the next level. So visit www.wylauk.com and get your child signed up for lessons in life, lessons in knowledge of self, and lessons in their own ability to lead. Also, once again, visit www.naturesharproducts.co.uk and try the beard oil, specially formulated hair butters. Check out those hair butters and so much more from Nature's Hair Products. Dear brothers and sisters, don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, The Nation of Islam London Study Group New. That's LSG. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I know we were looking at some statistics recently where, you know, out of the number of people who are on, uh, you know, the, the show whilst the show is running, only a very small amount of people would have liked or shared what they are currently observing. So don't forget, family, it means a lot when you like, when you click that like button uh, to demonstrate and to show that you are down with what it is that we're trying to do here. And it helps the algorithms also to further develop our show. And also don't forget, click the donation button to help us to continue what we are doing. And can I just say, um, if we, if the show is sometimes not on air you can always go on our instagram page noi underscore lsg and then we can put information out absolutely there. yes absolutely and can i give a shout out to our family in sweden wow cameroon south africa cardiff and america and of course our brothers and sisters here in london here in the uk right yes. here in the uk okay 
Also, bear in mind when you hear us using the constant refrain of separation from our historical enemies as the only permanent solution to the problems of these polarized black and white worlds of unequal and injustice, that's even that that even white MEPs are now highlighting this fact. Okay, dear family, don't think that we are out of touch with reality when you hear us continuously talking about separation and how this is the solution that you and I have to have an independent mind, an independent reality in order for us to actually grow and develop in, in separation from a system that's designed to absolutely crush us, dear family. Not only are we saying these things, but even white MEPs, in other words, members of the European Parliament are now expressing this same type of sentiment. Listen. Hello fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Ongil Zalalem bringing you this report. Today's report comes from the European Union. Nowadays, I don't know what's happening, but they're having disagreements amongst each other, the European countries, more and more. And now it's even becoming public. They're calling each other out in public. Now It's called Satan casting out Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, if you if you think that it's only okay, I've got a black face, and so those of you who are black and uh, black conscious, you know, you might think, okay, well, I can take it from Leo because he's a black man, and obviously I can identify with him. That's all good. It's good, and I and I don't decry you for that. But understand that we've also got black people, black like me, maybe even blacker, who are also white supremacists. But guess what? What you're going to find as well, if you look around, if you listen carefully, is that you have some white people today who will denounce other white people's evil. So don't just think that truth can only come from somebody who looks like you. Truth can, can sometimes come from people who don't look nothing like you and, in fact, a part of the enemy camp but they will be trying through their own conscience and through their own um, disgust at their own people's behavior, trying to do and say the right thing. So let's continue with this news report from Africa. The recent video that went viral is an Irish politician, Claire Daly, calling out the European Union. She's actually a member of parliament in the European Union. Let me show you this clip, we'll come back and discuss. I don't think you'd have to be a genius to know that the last thing the Horn of Africa needs is more foreign military bases, more weapons and more European meddling. What we call our strategic relationship isn't about human flourishing, it's about the EU's ambitions as a superpower. There's now a new great game in the Horn of Africa Greater and lesser powers are pockmarking the place with military bases. France, the US, China, Germany, Japan, Italy, Saudi Arabia all have a presence in the tiny area of Djibouti alone. Mercenaries are swarming in from all quarters. The entire region is being militarized. War is in the air. And what about the people facing climate and food insecurity? None of this benefits them. We talk about instability, but we only make it worse. We flood the place with weapons, hand over the profits to European arms companies and charge the bill to our citizens. And then with the carnage, we go back in and we do it all again. It's a racket. Strategic relationship, it's one thing after another, isn't it? Really, it's the same as it ever was. And all I can say is God save Africa from Europeans offering help. As you saw, like she didn't stutter. She actually told the truth. Hello fam, welcome back to the African diaspora. Imagine, you got this woman saying, God save Africa from Europeans offering help. <laughs> See, because that help will be just hindrance. Do you understand how long Africa has been subject to European aid? 
And what that aid translates into is African underdevelopment. And now, for instance, now you've got the Chinese and others going into the Caribbean, going into the continent or whatever. And the Europeans are the ones who are telling you mostly, you know, look out for those Chinese. Those Chinese, they're going to take over Africa. Well, the Chinese may have some pretensions to that, but I'm telling you this. They are no worse than these Europeans who came before them. And in reality, they're not doing what the Europeans did in the sense that when you look at some of the infrastructure products that they have embarked upon at the behest of some of these African nations and African governments, but nonetheless, dear family, it's time for you and I to start doing something for ourselves. What? The Europeans, the Chinese, the Arabs, all of them, what they all recognize is the tremendous wealth and resources, and wealth and resources includes the people of Africa. But unfortunately for many of us, we don't necessarily recognize our own worth, our own value, and that whatever they're able to do as outsiders coming into the continent, we could actually do it for ourselves if the African nations would actually recognize that in unity, there is tremendous strength and power. If we would stop this fratricidal mentality of one African nation fighting against another, thinking that they're better than the other one and maintaining these European fake borders that they created specifically to divide and rule our people. Man, when we wake up, it's really, really all over. But the question is, will we wake up in time? Because the enemy, while we continue to play games and, uh, you know, focus our enmity and hatred on one another on the continent and in other parts of the world, the enemy is not sleeping. The enemy is working 24 hours, seven days a week to undermine our development, to undermine that command of up, you mighty nation, up, you mighty people, you can accomplish what you will. A controversial and strange death is that of the late great musical icon, Michael Jackson. Do you all remember our brother, Michael Jackson? Isn't it sad how for many of us now, hearing that name, we might conjure up an image of some weird, crazy, mad, uh, wacko, jacko individual, some person who hated their blackness so much that they tried to turn white, and, and I, I, I'll admit that I was guilty as well in the past when I used to do some of my edutainment shows of suggesting that Michael Jackson somehow was selling out uh, because of the condition, the skin condition that he had in that, you know, he was trying to be white. Dear family, I'm saying that this individual such a beautiful human being that a world like this couldn't even begin to appreciate somebody of his character. A man who said that the idea of abusing a child, he would just want to slit his, both his wrists. That's how disgusting such a thought, such an idea is to the late, great Michael Jackson. A brother who said when he looked into the face of a child, he was looking into the face of God. That was his words, okay? And so, you know, we, I, I mentioned what I just mentioned because I know so many of us have been poisoned and booby-trapped, man, by a wicked world like this. And, and you may not know this, but even in the scriptures, the devil called Jesus... Satan. The devil called Jesus ugly names. <laughs> just, I just want us to think, because you see, 
I know you think that, you know, the people that he labels, and he's got these ways of talking about, oh, mud sticks, you know, and it, it, there's no smoke without fire and all this kind of crap. So that then we 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 start to say, well, yeah, you know, maybe he did this and maybe he did, but his music was nice, but then he then he messed up over here. No, there are people, dear family, who did nothing but good. But based on how they were slandered, based on how they were painted, based on evil that was said about them, some of us now, our memory of them is tainted and we view them uh, through a lens, the lens of our enemy. I just want us to think. Go ahead, yes, sister. Um, Clover Dragon says, Michael Jackson was extremely pro-black. Him and Prince believed and practiced black ownership. That's right. That's right. But again, like I said, how many of us really know this? Mm -hmm. How many of us really know? Not, I'm not talking about some surface thing, man. How many of us appreciate what both Michael and Prince mm -hmm. faced, what they had to go through, going back to Kanye, going back to Ye? And what he's saying today, because what he's saying is just what Prince and Michael said. I mean, I hope you will study, dear family, and do your own research. This is very important because throughout the years, black artists have been taken advantage of completely. And... It's time now that we have to put a stop to this incredible, incredible injustice. And uh, like uh, Mrs. Sharpton was saying, people from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that, uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am, these artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they would totally go broken. And uh, it's been, the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can, especially the black artists. Sony Tommy Mottola. Tommy Mottola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. Did you hear what Michael said? He said Tommy Mottola, the CEO, sat at the top of Sony Records, the devil. <laughs> Michael experienced him, man. He, he saw what they were doing. He went all the way back to James Brown and artists of that era and said how they suffered and how they had to be constantly on tour because if they stopped touring, they'd be broke. I mean, just think about it, man. How they keep all of this wealth and power to themselves earned off of us and keep the artist impoverished with some mad, crazy contracts and, mm -hmm. and and agreements that when you read the small print, man, it literally, the artist is literally a slave. Their family, um, I'd written here, let's hear what he had to say about the music industry and its treatment of the black artists that are within its grip. Okay, that's the music industry, brothers and sisters. It's heavy stuff. And when you see uh, Ye, or Kanye, trying to get out of their grip, and then you've got some of us ready to come out and condemn him as an anti-Semite, we're, we're sick. We're sick. That's like, you know, that's the, the, the classic house Negro saying, oh, Massa. I mean, look at the image of Prince with slave written on his face when he was in his controversy. Why did Prince feel the need to change his name to a symbol and then perform with the word slave written on his cheek while in a bitter dispute over ownership of masters, unfair recording contracts and exploitative behavior by the record labels and the music industry? And the question remains, why and how did he really die, dear family? Do you understand how many of our people have short lives based on foul play because they dare to challenge the system 
of white domination and control. And I'm talking about a system dominated and controlled by so-called Jews. <laughs> you, you better know this, man. And, and they're so powerful that they crush anyone who challenges them. This is real. Okay? You try to challenge them, they crush you. Except for one man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Here are a few headlines, dear family, about the latest black man who attempted to rise. Los Angeles judge approves request of the rapper, producer, and fashion designer to legally change his name to Ye. <laughs> I mean, imagine. Uh, I wish, you see, again, this is why people like Kanye, Ye, he should be studying history so that he understands what Muhammad Ali said earlier. You heard what Muhammad Ali said. I didn't have to go to court to, to wear your name. So why would I have to now go before a judge to wear the name that I've chosen for myself, which is more in tune with my nature, my character, with my God? See? Kanye West. No American icon has ever self-destructed so spectacularly. So they're, they're blaming him for his own self-destruction. See the way the, the media and the headlines are written? Just think about it. Kanye West, no American icon, because this is what he has become, an icon in the music and fashion industry, okay? Make no mistake about it. He's massive. No American icon has ever self-destructed so spectacularly. So what's the message to any so-called a uh, black person who rises within this system again, don't step out of line because it's you're the one who's self-destructing. Not that they have tried to destroy Kanye or try to destroy Ye. Do you understand? They're blaming him and claiming that he is self-destructed spectacularly because he dared to open his mouth and speak some truth. Kanye West claims he lost $2 billion in one day amid backlash to anti-Semitic comments, so-called anti-Semitic comments. But imagine, they can strip you of $2 billion. See, it's one thing to say, okay, you know, I lost $2,000 or I lost, you know, 200,000. I mean, that's bad enough. I mean, you know, you know, when they find these black footballers, mm -hmm. big money for some transgression mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever. You know, if you've worked hard and you've creatively made this finance for yourself and your family and your legacy and your people, what gives them the authority? What gives them the right to be able to bankrupt you mm -hmm. or to deny you the ability to? function mm -hmm. on a false accusation. That's why we have to separate. <laughs> there you go. Because some of us are striving so hard to succeed mm -hmm. within Satan's parameters. That's right. That's right. Remember what it says, what the, 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 the maxim says, if they can make you, mm -hmm. they can break mm -hmm. you, dear family. This is the rules that you need to understand about your rise among these people. Listen to this, dear family. This former Israeli government minister, her name is Shulamit Aloni, Shulamit Aloni, while speaking to Amy Goodman of Democracy Now! So you, some of you should be familiar with Democracy Now! It's a program that you can get online about, she was talking to uh, Democracy Now! and Amy Goodman about Israel's abuses against the Palestinians. She said that the use of the accusation of anti-Semitism is a trick that is used against anyone who dares to criticize Israel or Jews in Europe or America, either the Holocaust 
or the anti-Semitic card will be played using the power of Jewish influence in politics, media, and money to silence the critics. This is a former Jewish uh, politician, former Jewish uh, minister admitting hmm. that it's a trick. Listen for yourself. Yours is a voice of criticism we don't often hear in the United States. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. Yes, sir. And the, the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong. And they are strong in this country. As you know, uh, they have power, which it's OK. They are talented people, and they have power, money, and uh, media, and other things. And their attitude is, Israel, my country, right or wrong? The identification. You hear what the woman is saying? This is an Israeli, former government minister in the Israeli Knesset, OK? She's a Jew, and she's telling it like it is. It's a trick that is used on anybody who criticizes them. And she's admitting their inordinate power and control through money and media, etc. But anytime anybody dares to mention these things, oh, that's a that's an anti-Semitic trope. It's it's you know um, like the, you're you're part of the usual uh, trope of anti-Semitism when you dare to say what Jews admit readily every single day. They all know it's true. They know their control, but you're not allowed to say it because you're supposed to be a disempowered person as a black person you're not allowed to say what they can say about themselves i can guarantee you she wasn't uh deplatformed or silenced or lost her house and her money and you know had a, a name slandered throughout israeli uh the israeli press no that type of treatment is reserved for us and they are not ready to hear criticism. And it's very easy to blame people who criticize certain acts of the Israeli government as anti-Semitics and to bring up the Holocaust and the suffering of the Jewish people. And that's, that justify everything we do to the Palestinians. Brothers and sisters, friends, Viewers, I do hope that we are realizing as we count down towards the close of the year 2022 with the American midterm elections just playing out and all of that craziness that's going on over there where you've got a country like Brazil with a massive population of people who can have an election in one day, count the votes in one day, and have everything done and dusted in one day. But now they're looking at potentially days or weeks or even months before they know the complete results of these midterm elections in America, because the whole system is corrupt. They like to talk about banana republics. America is a banana republic, Britain, is a banana republic in terms of their elections and the skullduggery that goes on behind the scenes, pretending that you can't count a set of votes and give results on the same day to the people in order that they can actually understand what has happened. And having these complicated systems where it's not about proportional representation or one man, one vote, but some complicated system designed to confuse the masses as to how these votes are to be tabulated or counted. There's some wicked demons, man.
Nothing is straight. Everything is twisted and corrupted, dear family. And we got to extricate ourselves from these systems and these peoples. It's actually crazy how most of us as black people still don't get it. When you have the president of Israel and the president of the United States of America discussing the so-called anti-Semitism of Kanye West, now known as Ye, and the way in which he can be subject to a modern day lynching by the powers that be. Did you know that the president of Israel and America are having conversations about Ye, about Kanye? He's been subject to a modern day lynching by the powers that be with so many of our own people turning a blind eye or worse, joining in the public flogging, dear family. I know it came up uh, during your meeting with President Biden at the White House on an increase of anti-Semitism here in the United States. And we saw that just you know, in recent days with Kanye. West. This is the Israeli president. What the hell has anything to do with our brother got to do with him? But here he is adding to the public lynching. Now known as Ye. How did that discussion with the president go? Well, and, and I know you're very much concerned about what's going on in this country. We are all concerned by anti-Semitism all over the world, and of course, anti-Semitism here and everywhere. And the president was uh, clear, crystal clear, was uh, to the, uh, on target in, in fighting anti-Semitism with all tools possible. It's anti-Semitism, it's racism, it's racism. And, and by the way, let, let, me, let me just say this, dear family, because I, 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 you know, Kanye said it and I, others have said it, but I, I just don't know if we even get it. The man who is talking is a European. He's not Semitic. He's not a Semite. We are the mothers and fathers of Semitic people. Semitic means that they come from the original black man and then they got a mix, they mixed in with Caucasians. They're half and half, semi, Semitic. This man is not a Semite. This man is a European. He may have claimed to have adopted the faith of Judaism. But that doesn't make him a Semite. The original Semites, the original Jews are black people. You got Falasha Jews from Ethiopia who are discriminated against in that country of European so-called Jews who have taken over that land from the Palestinians. I mean, it, 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 it's sick. To have these people bleating on about anti-Semitism when they're not even Semitic themselves. For me or Kanye or Ye to be anti-Semitic, you would have to be, we would have to be against our own self. The Palestinians are Semitic people. So that means that we are anti-them too. Ridiculous. But so many of us. Fall for it. Phobia. These are the challenges of the era, but unfortunately, history teaches us that usually it starts with hating Jews, with blaming Jews, with terrible rhetoric that people say, you know, all. No, no, no. I'm a member of the Nation of Islam, Muslim. How do we feel about Jews? We love Jews, real Jews. Anyone who calls on the name of God by whatever name you call him. If you say Yah, Yahweh, if you say Jehovah, we love Christians, real Christians. We love Muslims, real Muslims. But not everyone who says I'm a Muslim, not everyone who says I'm a Jew, not everyone who says I'm a Hebrew, not everyone who says I'm a Christian is what they claim from their lips. You have many liars who claim something from their mouth, but their action speaks volumes. That's what we're against. 
talking about people hating Jews. No, we don't hate Jews. We love Jews. We love Christians. We love Muslims. What we hate are so-called Jews perpetrating a fraud. That's what we hate. He said it. And that's why I'm extremely pleased, objectively, as an Israeli, as a Jew, as a human being, I'm extremely pleased to see this overwhelming reaction against the comments by Kanye West. Mm. I'm extremely pleased to see this overwhelming reaction, this modern day lynching of a black man. Wicked demon. I'm telling you, man. In fact, let me just go back a minute because, yeah, let's go forward. Dear family, again, most of us still do not understand why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is such an important and fearless warrior for God and for black people and why he is the last man standing against this vicious enemy who is at work 24 hours, seven days a week, making sure that we do not follow the instruction to rise up at once from the imposed 400-year-old slumber. This is the reality, dear family, of that man, Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is so critically important to our rise. And while we continue to prevaricate and not realize that God has given us a champion, I want you to read out again, Sister Claudia, where people can find Minister Farrakhan's talk uh, from this morning, because we, we will have no excuse when in the final analysis we get a chastisement from God himself for our complacency in carrying out the instruction to rise. You mighty nation, you can accomplish what you will, but no cowards are going to rise. It's going to take men and women of courage. Go ahead. Beloved. Yes, you can log on to media.noi.org. That's media.noi.org. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, uh, beloved sister. <laughs> You may not understand this, but this is what you're looking at with what's going on with Ye, with what's going on with Kanye today. This is the image from the past, but this is exactly what you're witnessing, the buck breaking or the uh, brutalization of a black man in the public square in order to make him bow in order to make him accept a label of anti-Semitism, anti-Semite, in order to make him accept a label that comes from his, his open enemy, in order to make him renounce the reality of himself and accept an imposed tyrannical reality that means no good for him, but represents his total destruction. And I want you to look at the faces of the women and the faces of some of the other people who are observing this lynching in the public because it's designed not just to break the individual that is being tortured, but it's designed to break those who are witnessing, viewing. Do you know that back in the day, they would get the black woman impregnated on mass, and then they would bring all of the black women out into the public square, and they would take one of those women, tie her up, tie her to a tree, cut out the unborn child out of her stomach using a sharp blade, allowing that unborn premature baby to drop to the ground, and then the slave 
maker, the slave, master, the slave, the enslaver would stamp that baby's head into the dust so that all the other pregnant women observing that atrocity, that pure adrenaline fear would enter through their eyes and then into their brains and go all down into the unborn child, causing that child to be born in fear, not knowing why they're fearful, but frightened to death of the white man and his system of brutality and tyranny. You don't understand what you're dealing with, dear family. You don't understand the kind of enemy that we're dealing with here. This is Satan. This ain't no man. This is a beast in human form. And what he did wasn't haphazard, man. It wasn't a few bad apples. This was the whole system that this world that we live in today is built on that we think, oh, was some kind of accident. No accident. No accident. I want to hear you say your name. Your name is Toby. What's your name? Gunta. Lord God, help that boy. They're going to whip him dead. What's your name? Say it. Toby. Who are you? Say your name. What's your name? Toby. See that sister's face? That's it, man. You know why we say last man standing? You know how many of our sisters and brothers, when they look at the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan under the onslaught of over 40 years of this relentless beating and slander and evil poured out on him by this enemy, and the minister refuses to bow and bend his knees to this wicked Satan? Do you understand how that has allowed so many of our people to maintain their uprightness and their dignity? And what it means when you see a strong man broken and accepting a name, and don't think that this is the, about an individual called Kunta Kenti, taking the name Toby. This is what happened to all of us. Those of you who are so proud of being called John Smith, thinking that you've arrived. My God. Understand, man. That's what happened. That's how we got these names. That's how we became Christian. It wasn't some lovey-dovey walk through the park conversion. You don't understand what happened to black people to take us down from the people, the children of God, into the, 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 the depraved condition that you see many of us in today. Every other word coming out of our mouth is a swear word. We're all rough and nasty towards our women. We've got no shame. Do you understand what happened to us to make us like this? Upsets me, man. Hi. Say it again. Say it louder so they all can hear you. What's your name? Toby, my name is Toby. Hi. That's a good nigger. So you just witnessed the birth of a nigger. 
That's how niggas are made. Okay? Made to be absolutely terrified of pain and torture and beating by an enemy. And then we become whatever they want us to be. And we play the role. Understand this, brothers and sisters. This is what was done to the black man, woman, and child. I hope you're all good. You need to forgive my passion, but I'm telling you, man, I see some of us, we like to talk like we, like we really, like we really believe in the liberation of black people. But I know for a lot of us, it's a game. We're just playing. I'm not playing, man. I'm willing to give my life for this. Okay? I'm not afraid. You know, if that's the cost, then so be it. But I'm telling you, man, we're going to be free. We're going back to our creator. We're going to be the people of God all over again. And this enemy is going to get what's coming to him. Make no mistake about it. I know you think he's all powerful and he's gotten away. He ain't getting away with nothing. His day is done. Dear family, in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Do you know who that's talking to? That's talking to me and you. I know thy works. Do you know what, do you know what black people have done on this planet to make it what it is? Do you realize that we're the builders, man? I know thy works and tribulation. Do you know what we've had to go through? I heard the minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, if the truth was known about the black man suffering in the Western Hemisphere, it would make a brass monkey shed tears. A brass monkey would cry if people really know, knew what you and I have been through, what our ancestors went through. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty because they've kept us impoverished. Impoverished. All of the wealth that has been generated on this planet was generated through us and stolen from the continent of Africa, and stolen from the soil of the Caribbean, and our labor, man, sweat, blood, and tears. Yet we are poor in wealth because we've been robbed. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Listen to, listen to the language of God. Even though you've gone through all of that and I know what you're going through and what the reality of your current condition, yet you are rich. And that's what the enemy also knows. He knows we're rich, man, not on the basis of his standards, but on the basis of our spirituality, on the basis of our nature, our innate character, man. There's no people like us. But thou art rich. And I know the blaspheme of them that say they are Jews. It's blaspheme. They're lying. And I know the blaspheme of they that say they are Jews and are not. Uh, this ain't, I didn't sit down and write this last night. This is your scriptures. This is your Bible talking to one people and then addressing the blaspheme of another people who claim to be the Jews and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. How much more plain do you want it to be? This sister on the screen in her TikTok post sums it up quite well, especially, dear family, in a recognition of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. 
See, a lot of y'all did not understand why some of us was coming to Kanye West or Ye's defense when they labeled him anti-Semitic. But now if they're coming after Kyrie Irving, y'all are starting to say, well, wait a minute. Why are all these black men being labeled anti-Semitic? And especially when they're speaking up on truth or sharing their opinion. See, these so-called Jews, because we are not going to give them the benefit of being labeled something that they are not. These are white Europeans who just so happen to be Jews, who have no relation to... Don't call them Jews, family. So-called. Let them know that you know. ...being Semitic at all, who own the media and the entertainment industry. They weaponize the label of anti-Semitic against black men as a way to say, one, stay in your place, and two, to deflect from anyone finding out the truth or even having a discussion as to why they have so much control and power and influence and why they use it to do so many bad things. Kyrie Irving posts a documentary to his story that says from Negroes to Hebrews, wake up black America. And the so-called- That's the other brother that they're attacking, Kyrie Irving. The, he's under attack because again, he's a big time basketball player in the States and he's come under attack because he dared to again, try to stand up as a brother and just speak some basic truth about, you know, you know who. Jews call him anti-Semitic. But see, what's really happening is your anti-blackness is being exposed because why don't you want black people to wake up? See, because once black people wake up and understand that we are the true children of Israel mm -hmm. and we understand how we got into this condition and who was a part of putting us in this mm -hmm. condition, then the mask that you guys are hiding behind has to come off. Y'all remember how they handled Nick Cannon when he said that black people were the true Hebrews and how he aligned himself uh -huh. with Anvil Minister Louis Farrakhan. We'll get to that. They tried to take away his shows and take away his money, but see, they're trying to do the same thing with Ye, but Ye is not going for that. And they've done it to many other black men, to Malcolm X, to W.E.B. Du Bois, to Marcus Garvey, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, all of whom tried to... Every, every black man who ever stood up and faced this onslaught of poison white black people and advance black people economically. They labeled Martin Luther King Jr. anti-Semitic only after he started to tell black people to boycott and economically withdraw from them. And see, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has fought for black people- I'll show you a newspaper headline one of these days from the, 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 the rag that was called the News of the World in the Britain, one of the most popular newspapers in this country called the News of the World. Headline news, Leo Muhammad talking about me, Britain's prophet of hate. When did I become this hater? Because I dare to tell truth and align myself with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This is, this is, these people are wicked. I remember my dear mother calling me. She was so afraid when she read this headline, worried of, for my safety. Because you, you put that kind of stuff out into the world, man. Britain's prophet of hate. Come on, brothers and sisters. We need to wake up to what's going on. Well, for over 60 years, and who was the only black man to stand up after they were assassinated black leaders and fight even harder for black people. They labeled him anti-Semitic. Remember, these are the people who had a problem with Kyrie Irving saying, wake up, Black America. The Anti-Defamation League, one of the biggest Jewish organizations ever, said that Minister Farrakhan remains the most popular anti-Semite in America. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan instructed the Nation of Islam Research Group to go and figure out why they label so many Black men anti-Semitic and what this relationship between Blacks and Jews really is. They own the movie industry. You need to get the books three volumes mm -hmm. of the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. You need to do the research, dear family. You need to study. And in these volumes called the secret relationship between blacks and Jews, all you will read is quoting Jewish historians, right. Jewish scholars, 
Jewish people who have written, documented their own history. That's what the secret relationships do. They just highlight what Jews themselves have said about their role and their participation in our destruction over 400 years of enslavement. But yet, we're called anti-Semitic for quoting them, their historians, their scholars, their rabbis, in terms of what they've done to the black man, woman, and child. This is how wicked these people are. That presents us as being violent and uneducated. They own the record labels that have black men degrading black women, promoting violence and drugs. The Jewish people know their Hitler. Do you know yours? Dear family, as we come to a close, I really want to thank all of you for tuning in. And uh, I pray that something that's said is of benefit. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 39 to 44, it says Jesus is having a controversy and heated argument with the Jews. This is in your book, man. This is in the Bible. Okay? Jesus is having a controversial and heated argument with the Jews. In John, chapter 8, verse 39 to 44. They, the Jews, answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But no, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. Jesus is telling, I got this from God. I'm just telling you the truth. This did not Abraham, Jesus tells him. Abraham wasn't like you. You're claiming that Abraham is your father. Ye, Jesus goes on. He says, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Look, they're throwing slander on Jesus now, talking about the circumstances of his birth. <coughs> One of these days, we'll talk to you about the circumstances of the birth of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to show you the relationship between him and the man you call Jesus, that you think the scripture is talking about a man 2,000 years ago, when in reality, the scripture is talking about a man in your midst today. Listen to them. We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. This is the, the, the so-called Jews saying these things to Jesus in an argument, dear family. But listen to Jesus coming back now. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. See, Jesus is not representing himself. He's saying, no, man, I'm inspired of God. God has sent me. And you hate me. Why would you hate me if you're also claiming? Because some of us get confused over everybody is claiming God. But not everybody who claims God is claiming the right God or claiming the true God or genuine in their claim. Jesus says, why do you not understand my speech? See, every time the minister opens his mouth, they put some interpretation on what he's saying. But the minister is the plain speaker. Nobody can misunderstand what that man says. He's very clear. And even Kanye or Ye, when he has been speaking recently, he's been very clear, beloved. He's not talking about hating nobody. He's, in fact, he's talking about love. And he's talking about truth and dignity and freedom, justice, equality. But... Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. See, that word that is spoken, that righteous word that's spoken, has no place in them. Listen to Jesus' words to them. Ye are of your father, the devil. See, he's identifying now that these people have got a different father to him. See, Jesus is making it clear, I came from God. 
that's my father, our father who art in heaven. But now he's saying to the G, to the Jews, to the so-called Jews, ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. I mean, man, if we had time, I would break down lust. See, this is where you get all of this lust for power, lust for money, lust for control over everything and everyone. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, talking about the father of these so-called Jews, he speaketh of his own when he speaketh a lie. For he is a liar and the father of it. Don't ever, dear family, talk about lies. Oh, that's a lie. That's a, and don't understand that wherever you see a lie, a liar must have told that lie. All lies, all untruths, all deception comes from a deceiver or a liar. And these are the fathers of of lies. Dear family, I thank you so much. I'm saying up you mighty people. You can accomplish what you will. It's, it's hard to believe that it's uh, November because I'm always so hot uh, in the evening. I've got a bit, quite a big light in front of me, but I mean it's um, it's hot, dear family. It's hot. And um, I hope you, you're feeling warm. I hope you're feeling energized. I hope you're feeling empowered. Before we go, let me just hear from Sister Claudia if there's any notices that she wants to give or send out any shout outs to any of you tuned in this evening. Thank you so much, dear family. And I'm looking forward once again to another Image Nation, same time, same place next week, starting at 6.30 in the evening on a Thursday. And we will be coming to you with yet another subject designed as a call to action, designed to move you into action rather than to entertain you. Go ahead, sister. So just to say thank you once again, family, for tuning in. And don't forget to log on to media.noi.org to listen to Minister Farrakhan's address to Ye and Kyrie Irving controversy. And what I thought was interesting, the minister mentioned at the beginning of that about the UFOs. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being on the wheel Ooh. and how that is the judgment of America. So the minister is letting us know we have a power. Don't forget that us. subject, man. That's right. Don't forget. That those, was like a warning. Those so-called <laughs> UFOs. Don't forget. That's right. That's, that's right. ours. That's right. It was like, Black to people. me, that's like a comfort Absolutely for all beloved. of us. To Absolutely. Know. Don't be afraid. Absolutely. Stand beloved. up. Absolutely. Beloved. <laughs> Don't bend. Absolutely. So, Everybody is talking about nuclear war in, right. in, in, no. in Ukraine. Bob Marley said, I have no fear for atomic energy, mm -hmm. for none of them can stop the time. What time? That's right. Our time. That's right. God's so, time. Tune into that, family. Also, thank you, DJ Mr. P. Um, if we missed, yes, we did miss. It was pulled down by YouTube, yes. episode 53. Run and go and get a pen quickly, or if you've got a good memory. The address is https semicolon forward slash forward slash bit dot l y forward slash free capital W one four capital H nine two. What is that? Is that the is that, that the link? Platform. Yes. For for on um on Rumble. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do it a bit better. Where I'm gonna start sending the link out, okay. but uh, you can find it on Rumble. Just one more time, please, Sister yes. Claudia. So that read link that out. Is h t t p s semicolon forward slash forward slash b i t dot l y forward slash free capital W one four capital H nine two. That was the show that they pulled down from YouTube, uh, from YouTube that we did. And uh, evidently there was something in there that uh, upset them. So dear family, thank you so much 
for tuning in. May the Creator bless you and your wonderful family to have a beautiful rest of your evening. And I'm looking forward. Go ahead, sister. No, it's actually on www.bitshoot.com. Okay. That's what it's on. Really? Is yes. that the way it works? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, family in Dominica Republic, Ghana. Thank you all for your comments. Thank you for tuning in. We pray that God can guide and protect you all and your families. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wonderful. Wa alaikum salam. Take care, dear family. Look forward to seeing you all again very soon. May the Creator bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.